This is Two Shy Guys a Mile High. Cue the damn music. Yo, 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 we back. It's your boy P. Will. Al Digger. It's your boy WB. Hey, P. Will, ain't your new name Drip Chronicles? Hey, that's Aww. right. <laughs> Drip Chronicles. <laughs> Don't hate, man. Appreciate. Appreciate the waviness. Yes, for sir. Sure. For sure. Hey, what's going on, fellas? How y'all feeling? Ah, just, just blessed to be here, man. Um, it's always an honor to be here with y'all, man, and, and, and just get some thoughts out for, for the people to hear and listen, man. So uh, just great to be here. Thanks for asking, man. Man, I think this topic, what we're going to talk about, is on time because your boy WB, WB has had a stressful week. Mm. Um, it was his work. We just have our program increment planning. It's always a challenge, but it's fun. I don't, if they're actually listening, shout out to the, my team who got helped me get through the whole situation because, man, that week is never good. It's like a ebb and flow, and that whole mental pattern always around this time is, is around the two week mark i start getting stressed out because you got prep for it and then the whole week is kind of stressful too so um definitely want to just be mentally clear about everything going on in life and on top of that we still in the pandemic on top of still that in the pandemic. black folks still dying by the hands of the police and oh, we still man. digging our footage so um just having that mental mindset to be on point is definitely something that needs to happen so yeah yeah, I'm glad to be able to record too at the same time. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a harnessing my inner Al Digger right now, being a little bit down, but at the same time, just being real, say, hey, I, mean, I am going through a little bit, but it's good because yeah. I get to record this podcast and I get to relax this weekend and do domesticated work like pull weeds and stuff like that. <laughs> hey, for real, but that's that, the man. life of an owner, though. So you get to own your own now, you know, you got to go out there and take care of it. That's so real. the same thing with your, with your mind. You got to take care of your mind, you know? How you feeling? How you feeling, though? Health, man, hey, real quick. Uh, hey, man, I always want to do that. Hey, shout out this episode, man. It's for everybody supporting the justice for Elijah McClain. I was just uh, hearing that story recently about him being taken down. He was uh, visiting a store. I just, uh, I know it more in detail when I read it, but it was just to cut to the gist. It was just, he was going to the, leaving out of the store, dark time. You know, he had a, he lived in, uh, Aurora, Aurora, Denver. I think it was in Aurora. Aurora, Colorado. And then he was leaving the store and just, uh, he had a mask on because he was uh, anemic or, or, or whatnot. So he's cold. You know, living in Denver is cold for sure. You know about that. WB, come fly with me. But, uh, he was just, you know, taken down by police. They just, you know, uh, Walked up to him. I think he got a call. Somebody got a call and said that they saw somebody look suspicious in the neighborhood or something like that. And then police apprehended him, you know what I'm saying? He's telling them multiple times, I can't breathe. And then they just was just, I think he's 14 years old. And then he was just yelling out, I'm different, I'm different, I'm different. And, you know, he found out other stories about him, you know, how he's playing the violin for cats and stuff. Just doing his own thing, man. In his own zone, 14 years old, just getting take down. Snuffed out, man. Yeah, man. And and a, a... Obviously, a talented young man, and it, it's just this. This is this is why I know we talked about it, guys, and mental health and understanding the 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 mentality of of just certain. There there are people out here that are just they're just evil. I mean, let's just be real. That have no no moral compass, that have no uh, sense of right and wrong, and it really starts with you know, what their perceptions are for themselves, who they are and how they perceive the world around them. And then obviously this guy, how can you take somebody's life at 14, man? You know what I'm saying? Like there's, you, you can overpower this young kid. There's no need for force at all in that manner. He's coming out of the store, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's just, he's, he's, he's stating something. Hey, I'm, I'm different. I'm not, I'm not causing you any, any harm. And, it, it's it's just so sad to, to continue to hear this consistently, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we just want to also highlight the fact about the importance of, of mental health just in general. In preparation for this, this show, I looked up some stuff on the CDC website. Shout out to my sister because they're paying her bills. <laughs> um, it affects how we think, feel, and act. It includes the emotional, psychological, and social well-being of a person. And it helps determine how we handle stress related to others and make healthy choices. So it's everything, man, because everything in life is mental. I used to always hear that. It needs to be getting on my nerves, but it's so true. And it's the central 
response of our whole being, right? Mm-hmm. Our we are supposed to feed our mind. Our mind is not supposed to just run us ragged. And I have to check myself because I feel that sometimes I get into a bad rut and I just let my mind just control me. I was like, hold up, pimp. <laughs> you control the mind. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's it's just very important that you just realize how important the mental health is. Cause if you ain't right in the mental, you ain't yeah. getting nothing accomplished yeah. in life. Yeah. For real. And just the ways to look at it. I always want to know the ways to look after your mental health. And uh, the biggest thing I think is like just talking about your feelings, getting that out because, mm-hmm. you know, and people Crucial. think that, you know, people think it's a sign of weakness that I'm being, you know, open and uh, willing to talk about how I feel because you keep all that stuff pent up and talking about your feelings. It can, you know what I'm saying? It can come up with a way to cope with a problem that you're dealing with or something that you're dealing with, you know, and you hear that term that people always say it feels like a weight's been lifting off my shoulders because you're holding you you holding yourself down just being there compressed with all that stuff and you're thinking yeah. and just talking about it with other people it you know it, it encourages other people to speak up too yeah, yeah so it's just that therapeuticness of uh being able to I don't even know if that's a word is that a word <laughs> it is for the True hey, Chronicles hey. hey boy yes sir <laughs> word now. but you know it makes those conversations happen and they got to happen naturally organically. And, you know what I'm saying, you just got to be able to be open with people. So I think that's one of the biggest things I see when I'm talking about mental health is just being able yeah. to talk about that thing and having uh, the circle of people around you that you can be open to talk to people. Like, about. like two shy guys in my heart. Yes, yes. we're that's, open that's, to talk to people. That's why we're talking to y'all right well, now. That, that's <laughs> how it started, though, right? Like, you know, you go back to, to the origin, right? It was, it was just us three kind of getting together, having discussions like this and really looking at it like, whoa. Okay, we, we we touched on some topics here that, you know, I didn't even know you was going through that, P. I didn't even know you was going through that, WB. You know, so we sat down and said, man, this might this might benefit other people to kind of get a glimpse on, on some of the things that we talk about, like like you were talking about, P. Dunn, like opening it up to those conversations, being vulnerable, like, you know, us talking about some things that you're like, wow, I didn't even know you went through that. Hey, I had similar, you know, experiences, and then having that support there to help you through that and and... I want to go back to what you were talking about, WB, like just being at work and being so, you know, just having a lot on your plate, right? You know, having to too juggle much. a lot of things, if right? They hear me, it's too much. <laughs> but, 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 you're in, but you're in that position because they know that you're able to handle That's that true. Yeah. and able to to be able to be on top of things, even with the stress, right? Because you're able to compartmentalize certain things, say, hey, I, I need to get my feelings out of this, get it done because my team depends on me. I don't I don't care how I feel about it. And that's where you you know you you're able to to have a little bit more I think uh, mental fidelity if you will you 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 grown and understood my feelings will kind of get you in this in this loop mm-hmm. and I will just continue to just think about stuff that ain't even there yeah and you got to kind of say wait 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 hold on let me like you said let me check myself pimp I got to check my mind and realize am I am I making this up or is this something that I've been taught or you got to really start thinking about in your own internal compass your own internal uh, mm-hmm. governor is what I'm thinking valid. Mm -hmm. And that's the tough part, I think. And I think I had to process this a little bit differently, too, just from the very beginning, because I had to overcome my own fears about the negative um, negative connotation um, around mental health and Mm, change that perception as well, too, especially in the black community, because um, we already know that on surface level, if you say you are having mental health issues, people look at you a certain type of way. And it's really, I think, exacerbated, especially in the black community, too, because it'll make you feel that you are weaker, mm, making wow. you feel that you are less than when in our actuality, they should be applauding you for taking the the strength and going deep into yourself and figuring out the root cause of the problems, because a lot of your current problems in your life can be tracked back to traumatic experiences in your adolescence. And it's a process, and it takes a lot to unpackage that. And I can't do it on um, my alone. First of all, shout out to God because mm-hmm. he helped me with that. Shout out to Danny Dutro. She's my therapist. She keeps me in line, keeps me straight. And it's just those daily, those mental checkups that I have. Like for me personally, I need at least every couple of weeks, I need to just 
unpack and just talk some things through with her so I can figure out, hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm feeling this at work. Mm -hmm, Is mm -hmm. it normal? And I have to take that into account into my decision making. And it's so good because the relationship is great. I feel like I can talk to her about anything. She's unobjective. She won't judge me. Even though some people be like, well, you're paying her to be that way. It's not true. I'm paying her because she's a highly skilled professional who helps Mm -hmm. just make me better as a A total human being. A mental mental coach. coach. And just that being good in the head that just helps me be an all around better person so being able to work through your problems um, yeah. working through what you have going on being able to just talk out your feelings and being able to cope and, and realize what's right. going on and just being able to just be cognizant because it just helps you you know yourself as a person that much more bro let me, oh my goodness man, I didn't even know you I didn't even know you went through that man and like I, I think we talked about that um, just Piggyback on what you said, I, I have a mental coach as well. Shout out to Donna Flynn. Like, for real, like, kept me focused in situations when I went from Boeing to Microsoft, a, a huge transition, right? If we're talking about in the professional setting, there were certain things that I didn't, that I couldn't understand because I had never been in that type of, you know, transition in my life, right? And, and to go back to the stigma that we were talking about, like, I had this stigma of, whoa, like, if I, if I go and ask for help in this situation, then something's wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And that's really not the case, right? It, it was just, I had, I didn't know how to approach the situation because it was so different to me. Nobody in my family had, you know, gone from, um, you know, an engineer to like a senior level, you know, executive almost, right? I'm, I mean, you're talking about making some, some top level decisions. You got to, you, there's going to be things that you deal with that, that normal people might not understand. Nothing wrong with that. But how do you make those decisions without having the right frame of mind, right, or the right frame of reference, you know? And certain decisions, they were some tough ones where you had to you had to walk the line, you know. You're thinking that it's only you going through this, and you know, having that person in your life, like you said, with a professional, somebody mm-hmm. who who knows and understands on a, at a deeper level, like these are some of the tools you might need to actually be successful and and coach yourself out of that situation. So, so you can be in a better mental space. And it doesn't help probably in the atmosphere you're in because you as a black man in STEM at Microsoft starting to get into more advanced in your role. There's probably not very many of you around. So it's not like you can go to one of your counterparts and say, hey, I'm feeling this type of way mm. and then talk your way through that situation. So that's also another reason why it's better to get somebody who you can confide in that is not a, um, necessarily going to be talking about your business on the public too. So right. that, that makes it even more important so you can be as vulnerable as possible because if you're not open and honest with the whole relationship and say hey these are my problems this is what um i'm struggling with that that includes god you gotta come to him yes, like sir. with all your problems That's like he real. needs to know everything because you already know anyway so you might as well just open the book so same thing with the relationship that you have with your mental coach too if you're not open and honest about everything you're going on that person cannot help you yep. get better yep. at all so it's a very crucial relationship and if it's not working for you you just need to find who is working for you don't just get stuck in the rut um I was going to talk about it later, but we talk about it now. There's many type of ways you can find these resources. I mean, employee assistance, you can look on that. Um, just look on different websites, especially right now with everybody being indoors and a lot of the stuff being more virtual based. There's people offering sessions for free. So you just got to go look out and seek yeah, the information, information. And, yeah. and just ask friends for different type of people who they talk to. And even if you do have the same coach as somebody else, technically they can't talk to you you them about your business anyway because there's HIPAA laws behind it anyway right. so that's another reason why you shouldn't really care so it's like well it's <laughs> not really that you can sue them so and even mentors you know Peter you know yeah because that, that's what I was going to talk about is just the mentors that were that were in uh when I first started off being in the engineering field and the mentors that I looked up to being that you know that pillar for you know teaching me information and guiding me in the right Shout out to C. Scott. You know, he kind of just, because he walked in the shoes before I did, so this is the type of things that he's went through and being able to be uh, transparent and tell me about the, you know, the good times and the rough times, Mm -hmm. you know, to kind of give me that insight. It kind of helped guide me in the right direction because, uh, like, you know, it's stuff that's not going to be handed out to you. It's not just going to be laid out and just, hey, here's how you go do it. Like, you got to go out there and actually put in the the time and Mm -hmm. effort to understand. And I think it was, it was good for me because, um, since we talk about mental health and being open, cause you got to understand and 
realize when you gotta ask for help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think wow. that's the you know yeah, yeah. that's the first that's step. the first you know step, step, man. Yeah, that's yeah. you know you, you gotta be like if I'm in this situation like I I need help or something because sometimes I I witness myself you know taking on too much at one time and mm-hmm. then you know you just ain't got the you, you just ain't got the capacity to be able to do that do all those things at the level that you would like to do and perform at, you know, you know, it's possible to be done, but are you going to be putting, is the quality of your work and, you know, you can only stand by the quality of your work. So, uh, just being for him to instill those type of things in me, especially when I was young, just seeing it. And then I'm just witnessing him execute on the level that he's doing. I'm like, okay, so it's a, you know, it's, it's working. Right. Right. And I see it working. An example, you know, you get that example. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, just, you know, and then you also got to balance that with taking a break and, you know what I'm saying, and, and unwinding and having these talks like this. And, you know, I always had my my brother. He's always been a person I can like in my corner. No judgment zone. And you got to have those type of people. You know, when we talk about mental health, you talk about those that surround you because that's mm-hmm. what affects your mental health is the surroundings that you keep and the people that you keep around you because that's who you're going to be dealing with and associating with on a consistent basis. Right. So just having that, that that team and that support system, I always say that you had that team, you had that support system and had that structure to help build you up and take you where you need to be. You know, you can only do so much by yourself, but you got to be strong yourself and realize like, OK, I, I, you got to ask for help. You got to talk about things. You got to uh, all that energy that's kept within all those feelings. You got to be able to express those in certain ways and. Shout out to the podcast because it gives us that opportunity to be able to talk and be transparent with each other and be transparent mm-hmm. with everybody else out here that's our listeners. So yeah. that's, uh, you know, shout out to everybody <laughs> that's listening. We always, you know, and, uh, sure. you know, since we always talk about that, hey, we got people that's uh, listening to this. You know, if you're in the mental health profession or something, reach out to us. Let us know. Yeah, let us know. Definitely let us know because we also feel, though, is um, the black community can improve as we improve our mental health as well, too, because wow, yeah. we probably are still enslaved in our own minds. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our, our enemy is our enemy. And I, <sighs> and I, when in my morning, when I do my devotional and write out what I'm doing in the morning, I continue to try to put that in front of me because I know, I know how I can be, I can turn myself up. I, I like, you know I'm the, the worst on myself. You know everything you know? <laughs> about you. And that's the, we are all worst critics because of that. Right. And that's where like, we we I'll go back to what you're saying. You can you can get caught in your mind and get caught up in things that ain't even there because that mind is incredible. If you mm-hmm. if you if you mm-hmm. let it just run wild, that's what's gonna happen. Like with anything, we I think we had the we talked about it this morning. You had pull you pull some weeds, right? Yeah. We were talking about it on the surface level, right? If you if you go in there and you just and you just kill it the surface level, right? Mm-hmm. It's still gonna grow out. Them weeds gonna grow out, but you gotta get to the root, like deeply get down in that kill that root. You you said no, I gotta I gotta get to the root. And I said ooh, that's good, and it's really like. Like in life, you can see that surface level stuff. It looked good on the surface, but until you dig deep, until you get to the root of that problem and really pull that root out and kill it at that level, it's going to continue to grow back. And that's the same thing with them habits, those bad mm-hmm. habits that's rooted in maybe some of the some of the ways that you were raised or, or the environment that you were in. If you don't have help, you know what I'm saying. Sometimes you might need that example, like C. Scott. You know what I'm saying. Like a lot of people that have been in our lives, I'm sure you can we can talk about mentors and things like that. That's another mental health piece. You can actually physically see an example that gives you something to actually focus on. And then if they actually reach out to you and give back to you in that manner, now you have a safe haven, hopefully, to actually ask those questions. And that's all that's all coaching does or mental coaching does. That that gives you that 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 space to be, you know, to be able to let out some of these feelings that you might have inside. And that imagery is so powerful. That's why I think it's important for us too, as we, you know, advance this podcast, advance our career, advance what we're doing in mentorship to be in front of kids so they can see what is the art of the possible. Um, What does three black men in STEM trying to win? What does that look like? You know, what is it that we do? How, how, how can we pour back into him to show that, him or her that there is a way to do things differently and you can succeed in this world because that like you said that imagery is so po- powerful and if you don't have that in your life you're going to latch on to um just just randomness and it's probably not the right randomness that you need to be latching on to because like you said the mind is very powerful and if you don't control your mind it's it's like you're a child with a knife running around the house unsupervised and sh- that's something that Brooke Castile always says in her podcast and shout out to you Al for even putting me on game of on her podcast because it start that started help changing my mindset just knowing that 
you know, the circumstances that can trigger our thoughts, which trigger our feelings, which cause our actions, which cause our results. It all starts mentally. Mm-hmm. So if you don't get yourself today to know that your mind controls everything, it's a wrap for you. And it, and I'm not saying I'm the best of it at all times, no, but no, I'm, no, I'm no. cognizant of it because I, 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 I fall step, victim too. I'm like, man, well, I'm feeling a little rut. But just knowing that and figuring out how to work your way out and how to cope through situations. And I think it starts off with uh, like accepting who you are. Ooh, it's that, it's that big acceptance. Like some of us, you know, some of us make people laugh. Some are good at math. You know, we're good at STEM if that's the field we're in, you know. And it's just uh, some people share lifestyle with people. Some people can start a good episode on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but it, but we all different. So it's, it's much healthier to accept that you, that, that you are unique than to wish you were more like someone else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Feeling good about yourself, you know, it boosts your confidence and it gives you that self-esteem and it gives you that that willingness to, like, learn new skills. You feel good about yourself. You visit new places and it opens your mind up so it gives you the more chances to be out there grasping that new step or what that what that new lifestyle is or, you know, good, help, good self-esteem help you cope with when things take a turn for, you know, it's, it's, like, it's ups and downs to life. And having that good self-esteem and accepting who you are and knowing who you are, it helps give you that guidance and that strength for when times do go tough. Mm-hmm. You do, know what do, I'm saying? You, do you guys have any any coping mechanisms though that you have that you work with? Like when, like just when things go you know awry. Like like I know we talked about music a lot for me. Like just when like when I'm kind of feel like I'm going away from just really staying focused mentally on just just anything. Like I get into those, these mental ruts, like you said, just. I start thinking a lot. I mean, that's that's one thing that we. I mean, it's a gift and a curse, as you know, as STEM engineers. I mean, we're we're literally trained to think, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's hard to turn that off and really just kind of sit back and just relax. Like, like, do you guys have anything that that you kind of do? Like, yeah. I know you talked about devotionals and, and reflections, things like that. That, that but. works, but I think it's just the steps that you know what you need to stay sane. And I think it also goes back to what. Drip Chronicle P. Will was talking about is the fact that we got to take time for ourselves because I usually notice when I start getting real stressed out, I'm not working out. Mm. I'm not eating the right foods. I'm not doing things that bring me joy like that. So, yeah, definitely working out on the podcast, um, shooting around the basketball, just being active. Um, and just pouring myself into other things that can bring value into the world. Um, usually when I start getting stressed out, I start doing more and that's not necessarily the best thing. I probably should scale back and just focus on the core critical things that wow. um, I need to do and just relax. But um, that's just me knowing myself to know that you know, as I start feeling stressed, I feel like I need to do more and more and more. But I think that's just my coping mechanisms is figure out how to um, get through it and possibly that is too is a negative side because I'm just adjusting I'm just recognizing that at the surface level and I and if I scaled back and actually took time to decompose and really what's going on I can get to the root of the problems and mm-hmm. I can go a little bit further so just really taking time for yourself yeah really taking time like I said taking breaks uh and and I was just look like keeping active like you said because exercises like it, it helps to release those chemicals in the brain to make you feel good mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying you feel get on the box get on the Xbox you know yeah. what I'm saying hey get, get yourself on the Xbox yeah, like, get yeah. yourself on, 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 a on break, the PlayStation it may, it, whatever it, it may mean being very active or it also can mean not doing very much mm-hmm. taking a break it depends on what your lifestyle is to understand like listen to your body or what what the break that you need at that point in time is taking a break. Keep active. You got to eat good because whatever you put into your body, that's what's going to be your fuel. Mm -hmm. It starts off with that. So the more sugar you put in, you're going to be turned teed up. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) The more you eat good, the more you're going to feel good about yourself. And the more you feel good, the more you're going to, you know what I'm saying? You feel good, you smell good, you look good, everything's good. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Straight prime time. (laughs) But uh, it starts off with that and then keeping in touch, doing something that you're good at, so you got those hobbies, for real, since you asked mm-hmm. what I do, you get those good hobbies, whatever that you like doing. It might be stuff to take your mind off what's going on, but uh, accepting who you are and then caring for others. That's yeah. another part of mental yeah. health. You can't just think about yourself. You got to think about the others. And helping others out makes you feel like you're needed or valued, so it helps boost your self-esteem again. So just mm-hmm. those things that help you see the world from another angle and it opens your mind up that can help you 
put your own problems in perspective. You yeah, know? Wow. And, yeah. and helping people is good, but you also have to be conscious when you help people too. Because sometimes I have a big heart, and you start helping yeah. people, and I start feeling like their problems are my problems. Wow. And Ooh. that was something that I got coached through. Was like, look, oh yeah, just because that's their problem, that's not your problem too. And I'm not saying that from a social stand, uh, like a selfish standpoint, but more so to tell myself that I need to disassociate myself from that to make sure that I don't get caught into that rut yep. and, and, and start feeling bad, just as bad as them, if not even more, where it starts affecting my personal life, yeah. what I have going on in my own home, even though I'm trying to help you. So it sounds kind of crazy, but it's like, you just need to just no, you you have, have that boundary. boundary. Yeah, 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 just draw that boundary. Yeah. Definitely boundaries. And that's the hardest part, too, even, even with yourself, though. Like, we talk about that as well, just it's accountability too, you know what I'm saying? Setting those boundaries and saying, hey, I I, I want to help, but I can only help to this level. And just being upfront with that. But like what P-Dub was saying, you got to be okay with who you are and you got to be okay with just, hey, look, I'm setting this boundary. You can like it or not. For real. We all grown. You know, it's like, not like a child or something. We're all grown. Because I'm grown. <laughs> <laughs> but you can make your own, you know, you make your own decisions. Like we we, we do our podcast. We, we show up. We know we need to get it done. Right, so we we set those boundaries. Hey, we're gonna do it between this time and this time, and we and we stick to it. Yeah. And, and we've been able to continue to deliver content, and we hope that everybody's loving it. And yeah. you know, like us for sure, rate us, give us those those thumbs ups with whatever platforms you're on. You know, still waiting on that first review on iTunes for that five dollar <laughs> Starbucks ticket message, <laughs> that little certificate we might have to hand out or something. We gotta figure something out, yeah, man. For but, real. but we really just are clowning, but stressing that yo, hit us up and let us know. If you're in mental health profession, let us know. If you're struggling with something, just let us know. If you like the show, let us know. If you say that the show is poo, let us know. Because we still need to know like what it is about that that we can do to do So better. we can get to the root cause. Yeah, the right. root cause. <laughs> and uh anything like good, you know what I'm saying? When you when you're in that mindset and if you're looking to change anything of yourself for the better, you gotta understand, you know what I'm saying, what you wanna change and set realistic expectations. And understanding, is it a realistic expectation? And you work towards those changes in small steps. So just, uh, if, um, yeah, if you know anybody that's out there struggling with anything, let us know. We might have the resources to be uh, able to connect ties and connect lines. And if we know anybody in the mental health field, that's uh, if we know anybody that's struggling, please reach out to us because I understand, like, we got a lot of people that we know and just being able to share uh share information to other people and share like businesses that's out there. We may be able to tie links up to people that, that wouldn't even know before. And mm-hmm. this is just that, this is that source. This is that podcast for that information. Plug we talk. Spit. We spitting, we dripping. We trying to let y'all know we ain't tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but we ball hard like Scotty Pippen. Bars. Bars. Hey, Bars. You know, <laughs> Man, nah, but this this time is always just so therapeutic, and it helps us being able to be this open with each other, man. It's just uh, it's that it's it's a great time, and it's uh, we got to look for like I always say, look for the positives and anything that's going on, and it's just it's good to share this time with you guys and just understand like we all like minded people going through very different uh circumstances and going through very different things all within the pandemic, like you said. So yeah. we got to have these times where we're showing and we're being the leaders out here. We being able to be professional and give you guys content and we appreciate all the listeners we appreciate all the feedback that you have been giving us man we just want to keep these numbers up so please share with everybody you know it's your boy p will al digger wb we out that's a wrap that's a wrap